coming up ahead in this episode of X Talk Spotlight. This approach creates an AI system where you can immediately make those elements of the protocol digitally available to just essentially chat with your protocol and start drafting whatever insights document you might need. I really think it's an exciting area that's really making you know, the ability to leverage digitized protocols much more achievable um, and viable. Hello, and welcome to X Talk Spotlight, illuminating insights from subject matter experts and industry thought leaders. I'm Sonia Hunt. In this episode, we're asking the question, how are digitized protocols accelerating clinical research processes and what's next? Protocols are the driver of every clinical study, from early inception to planning to execution of a trial. They are also extremely complex, with detailed schedules of assessments, inclusion-exclusion criteria, and scientific reasoning, all encapsulated into a single written document. So how do we even begin to approach this? And how do advances in AI apply? Let's take a deeper look in this Xtalk Spotlight edition, where I sat down with Matthew Harrod, Director of Enterprise Data Strategy at the PPD Clinical Research Business of Thermo Fisher Scientific. In his role, Matthew champions the drive for the rapid adoption of AI in clinical research and provides expertise for applying technology innovations to the clinical product development lifecycle. Thank you for taking the time in the Spotlight interview, Matthew. Absolutely, thank you for having me. So to start us off, how can digitized research protocols transform efficiency and clinical trial operations? This is a great question because the protocol drives literally everything in a trial. So it's a little daunting to even try to approach the full breadth of it, but perhaps the uh, best way to think about it is sort of the same way we think about a trial life cycle. You know, in the early stages, there's the feasibility, the planning, uh, which of course is all protocol driven. But once you get closer to startup, you have numerous setup um, of systems like your EDC, CTMS, things like that. And those are all based on a schedule of assessments and other criteria in the protocol. And then there's numerous other derivative documents like your data management plan, your statistical analysis plan, and dozens more that have to be produced. And, and even beyond that, there's uh, the perspective things you can learn from digitized protocols um, to create more optimized future trials. So. You know, if you take this in its entirety, you can start to step back and group these into families of use cases with common challenges, common benefits. So maybe the first one you could think about is a, a family of use cases centered around document generation, and then another that's more set up around system setup. And then finally, that related one that is around taking, you know, your previously digitized documents and or in protocols and, and not analyzing them um, for optimization of future trials. Once you have these families, then you can start to count up all the individual tasks that fall within these. And then you can apply some expected time savings where AI tools or automation that's been made available by digitization of protocols can start to save you 20, 30, 40% of time per process, depending on the specifics. And then you can start to see how these individual time savings made possible by protocol digitization can start to really cut out a lot of that administrative white space that's associated with trial and, and add up to actual days or weeks being shaved off of a trial's timeline. Could you share a real world example or case study that highlights the successful implementation of digitized protocols in clinical research? I think one example is using, you know, the systems that collect information to represent parts of a protocol, like the schedule of assessments. Um, or other areas into more standardized data models. And then those can be consumed down downstream systems like your EDC or your labs. Now, these may have some level of automation, but you'll also have significant uh, human input and review. But either way, it's still worth it to do the work on these, get that data into certified sources of truth, because either way you end up with a more standard format um, that can be consumed downstream and having a reliable method to uh, directly consume these into those systems, more automated. But another uh, example of success that's maybe a little less time consuming up front um, is that I've seen is in document generation uh, use cases, such as medical writing. So if you think about all of the information that's got to be referenced when you're drafting a document, especially in medical writing, and how it often comes in in unstructured portions of your protocol, if you digitize your protocol, 
either through a structured or through a generative AI approach, you can start automatically pulling out a lot of that key information that you need when you draft that document. Things like the inclusion criteria, the potential risks and benefits, all that kind of stuff that normally you would have to search for if you're just starting with a PDF protocol on a blank page. Uh, now, this no way completely replaces uh, human expertise, but it does make the humans doing the work much more efficient. And, and that's where you start seeing these time savings start to add up 20, 30 percent, 40 percent here and there. They all come together. And I think it's an area where we um, are going to be really expand in our larger discussion. And what role does AI play in enhancing the utility and effectiveness of digitized protocols? Thank you for this question. I, I really think this is absolutely no doubt that artificial intelligence is playing a huge role in the utility of digitized protocols and, and making them more effective for their use in trials. Um, when you think about, again, how a protocol is usually delivered, it's often in the form of a lengthy PDF document. It is a bit of a challenge to digitize everything into strate- uh, traditional structured models um, that are need for some of these use cases. Now, conversely, there's immense opportunity to leverage generative AI, which does not require so much you know, structured data preparation to start seeing nearly immediate abilities to interact digitally with the protocol, bring that to lie. Since large language models, which are part of artificial intelligence, can understand the text of a protocol itself, they can read what's in there without all that upfront data and let you start chatting with it. Now, I don't want to leave the question just at that. Since you specifically have asked about AI, I'll take it a step deeper to explain a little bit. It's not just that you can log into a web-based chat or a platform and start asking questions. That's not going to move the needle on its own. What I'm uh, talking about specifically is the concept of retrieval augmented generation or RAG that you might hear about in AI. And what this means and this, what this, why this works for protocols is you have an environment where you leverage a chat-based AI technology, but then you focus its sphere of reference to just a few set of documents. And thereby you're augmenting the AI model that's already been built with retrievals from a specific item, such as a protocol. This approach creates an AI system where you can immediately make those elements of the protocol digitally available to just essentially chat with your protocol and start drafting whatever insights document you might need. I really think it's an exciting area that's really making, you know, the ability to leverage digitized protocols much more achievable um, and viable. Now, in your opinion, what are the biggest challenges in transitioning from traditional to digitized protocols and how can they be overcome? There are definitely challenges. Uh, One area is the sheer complexity of how protocols might be set up. You know, let's look at the schedule of assessments, for example. The overview of assessments on those main pages of a protocol, they don't necessarily tell the entire story needed to create a digital representation of this concept. So what I mean is that you may see an activity that is intended to occur on visit two or visit three of a study, but then you have to refer to numerous footnotes and and other you know medical knowledge to uh, understand the nuance of these. An example might be that a lab or a diagnostic might be required on visit two but only if conditions X, Y, and Z, you know, were observed in a previous visit. Things like this start to impact the viability of your technical options, which uh, might struggle with this type of nuance. And they also raise the level of human effort needed to make sure you're getting a high quality digital representation. But here's the thing. I really don't think this is the biggest long-term challenge because technology continues to improve, become more sophisticated and uh, help us, you know, require less human intervention to make sure it's getting it right. The real challenge, the ongoing challenge that technology can never eliminate is the need for proper governance and quality controls. So when all of your interaction with the protocol is being done manually, it's less efficient, but you also have the benefit of human eyes with human experience being laid on every aspect of the work. What's important is to create governance to uh, review the outputs of any technology we're putting in place to digitize protocols uh, and have humans in the loop so that we can have a trusted environment for all of our downstream systems to actually use this data that we're producing. And again, I I don't mean to oversimplify, but despite this being a challenge, I really like to stress that it's also no different than what we've always done with quality controls. Uh, The challenge is just making sure that we're updating our processes and our quality controls to leverage new technology and manage risk, you know, as they're coming up today and also evolving for, you know, the the methods that we're seeing in the future. 
And to wrap up, what key areas of clinical trials stand to benefit the most from protocol digitization in the next two to five years? Well, I feel like there are so many areas uh, that you have an impact on trials by digitizing protocols. You know, many of these are seen today, such as streamlining the system setup, generating documents, things I've mentioned. And I think these will continue to accelerate. So that's one. But one of the most exciting things to consider as we move into the future is going to be our ability to look back in a few years and analyze these protocols that we've been digitizing now and understand what's not been working the best over these past few years and apply these to future studies. This really goes just beyond the protocols and the trials themselves. You know, if you imagine a world where you're able to leverage the historical data of the protocols in tandem with new specialized AI that's been trained in medical um, or clinical research, uh, not just today's chat models, you can start to imagine using these repositories to um, identify new areas of risk or new optimizations that we wouldn't otherwise see for future trials uh, more efficiently, more broadly than you can really do today. So, of course, I can't really see the future, but I think an important takeaway I would offer would be to watch for not just better and faster ways of making the trial at hand operate more efficiently, but also, you know, ways that the products and the trials themselves can be conceptualized and optimized from the start using the aggregate of the information that we're starting to build today by making that shift. Well, thank you very much, Matthew, for speaking with us today. We really appreciate your time and insights. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. We look forward to learning more from the PPD clinical research business of Thermo Fisher Scientific. Thank you all for joining us for this X Talk Spotlight feature. We hope you enjoyed the discussion. <laughs>